and welcome to the new channel motorcycle news lifestyle where we discuss what's happening with motorcycle manufacturers rallies different events we do not talk about motorcycle club news on this channel that's over on insane throttle biker news go over there subscribe as well today we're going to be talking about harley davidson boy are they having some trouble in the electric market more specifically freaking live wire not doing good at all i think the live wire has been a drag on harley davidson as you know they put it out there they made it a separate company and now the investors they're getting scared they're running scared with the live wire and there's all kinds of issues with the live wire that needs to be settled before it even becomes a competitor in the electronic market or electric market whatever you know being an old scooter tramp and stuff it's hard for myself to imagine nothing but electric motorcycles even though give it 20 years that's probably where it's going to be at but the live wire these investors are they're fleeing the ship man they're getting out of there because there's other alternatives from companies that have this down pat and harley davidson ain't one of them but they're uh at the point where they gotta flip the bill now let's go to this uh jello uh nick and take a look at this and this is by jose rodriguez jr live wire loses almost 370 million dollars as investors flee forcing harley davidson to pick up the tab now, even after going public, the Livewire EV spinoff is costing Harley Davidson's millions more than expected. I don't know. Maybe Harley Davidson should have stayed with its core customer base. Meaning, hey, they got 50% of the big bike market. Stay with that. Stay with something you know, even though... On the other hand, they're going to have to diversify as far as their products are concerned. I just think it's too early for them. I think they brought the live wire to market too quick and really didn't think uh, things out. That's just my uh, personal opinion on that. Harley Davidson insisted on spinning off the live wire brand earlier this year. The U.S. bike maker was eager to establish a separate identity for its upcoming electric motorcycles, but it was also eager to secure funding for its new EV brand, doing so through a special purpose acquisition company in lieu of an initial public offering that plan has become costlier than Harley could have hoped for. Now that the live wire funds are being funneled out of the company by investors in the tune of $370 million. You have to sit back and ask yourself, as an investor, would you take the risk on a company and a product that hasn't had a true, you know, a proven record of sales on this motorcycle? I think when it started out, it was like $30,000. Now, I know that electric motorcycles right now are the playground for the urban setting. And you know why? Because it only goes, what, uh, 100 miles, 200 miles on a charge? So, yeah, it's going to be mostly an urban type of deal where you're not going to be doing any long distance riding and stuff. So, really, how many units of the live wire are you going to sell? Very interesting uh, question that Harley Davidson's going to have to answer right there. It's hardly been over a month since live wire went public by merging with the AEA Bridges Impact Corps on September 27th, but the initial investors who propped up the EV maker. With a $400 million investment, and this is by right apart, 
have withdrawn 370 million and left the company with a, just a tiny fraction of its startup funds. It's a big loss, which comes on the heels of Livewire falling short of projections by 251 million dollars. Holy cow! You can guarantee as an investor in you know moderate stock stuff I like playing around with, I would never go with something like this because they don't have a proven track record out there. Now, a company like Zero, who's been in this game for a while and has proven to have a good product, you're damn right, I'd be all over that right there with Zero. And I think Harley Davidson is just going the wrong way here with the way they see the EV market. They could try to copy others. Hey, it's fair game because people co uh, copied Harley Davidson. But at the same time, you have to have the no to forward your product, which I don't see Harley Davidson having. I think with the EV market, what's happening is they're hoping that the Harley Davidson brand is what's going to carry them through. But in this case, it's not because it's a whole different market. Again, you're mostly with the upper middle class rich that's going to buy this product. Sad state of affairs right now. And then they talk about uh, how much more influx of money they're going to get from the uh, public offering. But at the same time, Harley owns 90% of the Livewire shares because they wanted to keep control of it, uh, which is up from 74% uh, when the EV maker spun off and went public. That's either good or bad, depending on your opinion of Harley Davidson as the parent company. And it also goes in to say, remember Buell, we remember Buell. Well, the Livewire S2 Del Mar is almost as cool as a any Buell is right there. The problem with looking at it that way is it doesn't matter how cool the product looks. It all comes down to performance. And it all comes down to whether somebody's going to buy your product or not. And the live wire had all kinds of mechanical stuff going on at its release. Its price point is too high. So I really don't think uh, it's a winner for Harley Davidson. You know, I'm just saying. Now, going out to Penn Live, Florida company to take over logistics at a Harley Davidson factory. And. This is, let me get this turned down here. This is something that Harley Davidson's been doing a lot lately. Uh, Florida company has announced it will serve as a third party logistics service provider for Harley Davidson in York County. Now, Harley Davidson, since the new CEO has taken over, is trying to be, you know, trying to streamline the process and all that type of stuff of trying to get costs down, which any company is going to have to do. So they're using a lot more outside vendors for that. Uh, Comprehe what is it? Comprehensive Logistics will take over logistics at the facility on Memory Lane. Uh, quote for the... York Logistics Contract, HD and CLI are partnering together to ramp up production to support the positive projected customer demand for HD's legendary motorcycles. And that's one thing I was just saying. Does Harley Davidson need to stick with the products it's known for? Or should they slow up? on their EV projects until they get a good, reliable product, get the price point down. These are many questions are that they're going to have to answer because, again, their core rider now, average age is in the 40s. When it used to be decades ago, 
30s. So their customer base is starting to be an age where they can be aging out of motorcycles in 20 years. You know, it's very rare that you see the old scooter tramps anymore that stay in until their 70s and mid-70s. So, very interesting stuff out there. Hopefully you're enjoying the new content on the channel. Again, don't forget to subscribe and like, and don't forget to go over to Insane Throttle Biker News to get all your news coming out of that uh, section of the scene. Again, like, subscribe, and we'll be dropping a new video over here on this channel at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Rock on! Got a lot to say, can't hold it in this time Got no filter, I got no filter No filter